Good morning, YouTube, and welcome to my channel, Forever Altered. Um, I had a little thought yesterday, a realization, if you will, um, that in order to be in a relationship with a narc, we have to be willing to um, have a relationship that has no investment required. Um, the narc will obviously want you to invest, but they will not. They want to find someone who will be satisfied with nothing, basically, with them giving nothing of quality to build on. But um, you, they will want your best. And they look for people like you and I who are empathetic and who are willing to do anything to try to make a relationship work, who are not quitters, who will keep trying and figuring out something, educating yourself, trying to, you know, find that missing piece of the puzzle, and who have a hard time just totally giving up on someone and saying, this is never going to be any different. I, I need to get out. Um, I shared with you last week that I even found, was able to get on my um, narc's phone and found evidence of him cheating with other women and um, near as I can tell it was about three years ago it was while I was either pregnant with our daughter or after she was born and um, I don't know if there's more but that's all I found um, I confronted him and his attitude was you know that was before we really knew what we were doing and you know I thought you were doing that so I mean, he, he just explained it away. He left me with a big pile of hurt and pain, of course, and um, a lot of unanswered questions, and he basically just let me hang with it. So, you know, it's it's over for him. It, it didn't shock him. He didn't see me having sex with someone. He, he didn't have to look at that. He saved videos and um, pictures. Videos. Videos. So... Uh, that's pretty shocking, and it was very hurtful, but, you know, there you go. He, He's not empathetic. He could really care less. He's just moving on and trying to go back to the way things were. Um, so I'm, I was thinking to myself, that's the problem. They want no investment required. They want you to be willing to accept that. In any relationship, there is a requirement of some investment of your resources. It should be mutual. You should be uh, both working towards a goal and be offering your best resources. And um, sometimes one partner may put forth more effort than the other, but in, in looking back, it should be mutual over the long haul, a give and take, somewhat equal. It shouldn't be you're the one trying everything to make it work, and they just don't care. And um, that's, you know, what, that's the relationship with an arc. So to make a long-term committed and valuable relationship, you need to put forth some of your resources, your investment into the relationship. So I, w I thought about um, just talking about that for a little bit, about what, what is it that we're giving, and then what is it that we're receiving and thinking about, you know, what we expect to get out of that. Maybe to talk some sense into me and you both, all, all of us. So I made a list. And um, what do I give? What am I trying to offer in a relationship? If you want to make an investment in a relationship and you want it to be a quality relationship that, that is able to build on and be a forever thing or a long-term thing, um, you offer. You offer trust. You offer honesty. You offer empathy, compassion, passion. You offer love. You offer respect. You offer understanding, forgiveness, and honor. And I feel I have offered all of those things, and I've been shut down in many ways. Um, forgiveness, I think, is a big one because a narc wants you to really offer forgiveness. Every transgression, every insult, every put down, every rage session, he wants you, you or she, wants you to forgive, move on, and go forward. My narc said to me the other day, you're the one that keeps score. You're the one that records 
when we are fighting. Because he knows. I mean, I've played things for him. I wasn't trying to keep a secret that I was recording him. And um, But to him, it's like, you know, just forgive and forget and move on. To me, I started recording so I could play back the argument later by myself and literally was hoping to find some evidence that, you know, maybe it is me. Maybe I'm provoking it. Maybe I should have, you know, done, but, but ultimately I found that it was nothing more than gaslighting, trying to blame me for everything. He would say, you provoked me. You started it. You did this. Well, you came at me with this attitude and, and I was able to listen to the fight and listen to how it transpired almost from the beginning because you can tell when an arc's about to blow. So it may not have been right at the beginning, but it was very close. And so I was able to get enough information to know that it wasn't me. It was not me. Um, anyway, so what are we getting? What are we getting back? What does that no investment look like? Um, they, they make an investment, but it's not a quality investment. It's not a good investment. It's certainly not a healthy investment. Um, they are investing secrecy, lies, cheating, which I have now learned that if you think they're not cheating and they're being secretive, you are wrong. You are, you are living in a delusion. They are cheating. If, if they're living a secret life and they're even disappearing once every couple months, if they are keeping you away from their friends and keeping you away from their family and and just really you have no evidence of of what they're doing aside from what they do in your home I guarantee you they're cheating I guarantee it now that was the one kind of thing I was holding on to a hope that I was wrong about but now I know different so um, they're giving you manipulation. They're manipulating the truths. They're manipulating situations. They're manipulating and gaslighting you. And um, they, they are doing it strictly for their own benefit. They don't care how it affects you. They don't care if it hurts you. They don't care. They don't, they really don't care. Um, they're giving you hidden truths. They're giving you partial truths. They're only telling you what they have to tell you, what you absolutely need to know. They want you to be in the dark as much as possible. They want you to, to keep you guessing, to keep you wondering what is going on, if anything is going on. They are giving you gaslighting, for sure. They are blaming you and making you look like it was you, like it's your fault, um, like the arguments are your fault, like you provoked and you deserved what you got because you're the one that, that started it. Um, they're giving you mistrust. They mistrust you. They tell you that they don't trust you. They call you names and tell you you're a cheater and all these things. And they're, they're doing it to muddy the waters. They're doing it to throw you off track when the cold hard truth is, is they are the ones doing this. They are the ones cheating. They are the ones going out and, and doing these things that they're accusing you of doing. And they know it. They absolutely know it. And they don't care that they are telling lies. They don't care that it's not true. It's doing its job. It's keeping you in line. It's keeping you hooked. That's all they really care about. They are still getting what they want out of the situation. They are getting the supply they require, and that is the ultimate goal. They don't care how it affects you. If it's true or not, it's irrelevant. They, um, they, don't, they don't see you as a person, so therefore, you know, your hurt, your uh, feelings of rejection, your loneliness, <clears throat> it doesn't matter. Um, they will trash your opinion of yourself, and uh, I have been called every name under the sun. I, I have some audio I think I might share. Uh, just not even two weeks ago, he went through a huge rage session, and he called me every name in the sun. His names aren't as bad as they used to be because I literally don't care, and um, there was a time when he would literally crush me with his words. He called me... Uh, he, called, he would call me fat all the time. He calls me old. He's nine years younger than me. I'm 51. He's called me everything from 52 to 55. Like he wants to hedge it up to make it worse or old. You know, you're older. And um, I've said to him, who cares? But he um, he has made fun of everything I wear. He has made fun of my every body part. He has, you know, said he's called me fat tons and tons of times. He's 
pulled his shirt up and beat on his chest and said, you know, you can't even get naked and have sex. I mean, these are the things he has said to me on a regular basis. Um, it isn't quite as bad now. Mostly he calls me a cheat and a whore and white trash. That's his favorite thing, white trash, because he's mixed and um, he likes to blame everything on race. So that's his favorite. But anyway, we are willing to accept no investment, no quality investment. All of the things on the list that we are you know, we, we give, or at least we gave in the beginning, and maybe we've learned not to anymore to this person, but that's how we started out, because that's how a normal relationship evolves. Um, but these are not things we're getting. Every single thing on this list, I guarantee you, is something you're not getting. If you are getting it, it's a false. It's, it's false. It's not, it's not a true, real emotion. Trust, honesty, empathy, compassion, true passion, passion for you as a person, not just you know, they have a sex need. I'm saying true passion for you. Love, they don't know how to love. Respect, they do not respect you. Uh, guaranteed. They do not understand you, nor do they care. Uh, forgiveness, no. My narc holds every single thing that ever happened to him in his life with everyone, not just me. He holds that all in and he keeps grudges. He doesn't forgive anyone. Honor, no honor. There is no honor. Uh, there is no joy. There is no happiness for you as a person, for your achievements, for your, 